I'm Scott L. Miller. It's the 6th of October, 2022, and welcome to my vlog of daily life in Nicaragua. Today I have a special request, so I'm going to explain real quickly where I am. I'm going to spin the camera around, and we're going to start talking about stuff, because otherwise it's going to take a really long time. So let's get started. We are here. This is the Ban Pro in Sutiava. This is where we have uh, Ruben Dario turns into a boulevard in the Panaderia Jerusalem, which is a major landmark, and this is the street light. Asutiava, the Super Toro here, which yes, that is a uh, carnita, a, a meat store, um, begins what we're looking at and I'm going to start talking. So my request for the day, I want to do this right away so you guys know what's going on, is I was asked to walk Barrio Saragossa uh, to show it specifically to see what the housing situation was and what is available. And so I'm attempting today to walk, if we can pull it off, the entirety of Barrio Saragossa. So I am currently on Ruben Dario. This is the main east-west boulevard through the city, and it goes from the beaches out in the west to the Basilica downtown. I am walking on the right side, or the south side, of Ruben Dario, which is actually in La Borio, and what we're looking at is the southern edge of Saragossa. Ruben Dario separates Saragossa from La Borio, and the street light that we started at is the point which is 8th Ave, separates uh, those two barrios from Sutiava to the west. Sutiava goes both north and south. So that is where we are and why we are walking this way. So I'm gonna get back to the day's updates, hola, and talk about that, that is Freddy Bar. For those who are wondering because i don't know if you can see the cat on the roof over here but he's pretty funny so pay attention to the cat on the roof that is that is our point of interest here lots of cats on roofs in the country but i don't normally get one like this on the show we're gonna stop and just notice this cat he's hilarious he's gonna be really tiny on your tv but he's really hilarious and this is why at night the dogs are constantly upset because these cats love to walk from building to building on the roofs and they make a lot of noise and sometimes they have cat fights up there and you really hear it in the house and you're like what is going on and it's just cats on the roof so this part of zaragoza has very little housing so this is where i'm going to mostly talk about other things as we walk by and just show you what southern zaragoza looks like and a lot of this portion is on the show on a regular basis because this is Ruben Dario. So we're up and down this all the time. And this is extremely close to where I live in Labo Rio. The Saragossa and Labo Rio are mirrored barrios. Saragossa to the north, Labo Rio to the south. They are some of the oldest and most central barrios in Leon. So these are the core barrios more than almost anywhere else, uh, along with like Guadalupe uh, and a few like that that really form the middle of the city other than downtown itself. El Centro, I am going to cross dangerously this intersection uh, just because it's hard to film from the other side of Ruben Dario at this point. So today is Thursday, I believe, the 6th. Yes, it is Thursday and a lot of work again today, but again, another good day. Not a lot to report. This is uh, Tacos Marlene. This is one of the, if not the most famous taco place in Leon. Very, very, very well known. People come from Managua just to eat there. So worth noting, nothing vegetarian. So if you're like me, don't get your hopes up. I have not tried it, but people I know make a big effort to go there. Lots of little shops along here. And you can kind of see down the road, the Basilica is right there. So we're pretty close to the center of the city at this point. And I'm dangerously walking in the road, but there's not that much traffic. No one's going to clip me, I don't think. <laughs> he says bravely and possibly foolishly. This is a coffee shop that I... Whoa, that was a truck. Okay. This is a coffee shop that I have not had a chance to try yet. But it looks really interesting, and I really need to stop in there. This is actually the pharmacy that I use. And another pharmacy. Many, many pharmacies everywhere in the city, really. All right, no traffic for a bit. So today's only real point of interest is that tonight, uh, Liesl decided we were going to start uh, watching The Lord of the Rings. 
So Luchana has been binging Stranger Things, but she just wasn't in the mood for it tonight. So Lisa and I are like, oh, well, we'll watch what we want to watch. That's cool. And so Lisa had seen at least some of the Lord of the Rings movie the, from like 2000 uh, when she was younger, but it's been a really long time. She doesn't remember any of it. So we went and bought The Hobbit on Amazon. I talked to her first and said, this one isn't as good. It's definitely a lot more boring. The story isn't as good, but it's the first part. And most of the people who read Lord of the Rings read The Hobbit first. So it's kind of important to understanding the characters. Just real quickly, that is the Iglesia Zaragoza down there, just as a landmark. And on the La Borrio side, this is Tacos Abaluz, which is another famous taco place. And uh, you see us come up here all the time. This is Duomo right there, the colorful place uh, where we come quite often for dinner. But this is La Borrio over here. This is Zaragoza over here. This is what we're looking at today. So Lisa and I started watching The Hobbit, which of course is 10 hours long. We're watching the full extended version. We got it from Amazon Prime uh, and it's $30 for all three movies. So it's a great deal. Uh, so we started watching um, An Unexpected Journey, made it through that and she was surprisingly happy with watching it. She agreed it's pretty boring and really goofy and written like a little children's book. Um, and much goofier than many video games. But overall, she enjoyed it. So she decided we were going to keep watching Into the Desolation of Schmaug, which we watched about two hours of. There's a little... Uh, this is uh, Gales Tienda. A little Variedada there. But pretty nice. They have like neon signs. It's well organized. Like that's, that's a cute store. It's, it's nice when you can find places that really put in an effort and have nicer shops. This is the street with... Uh, La Sage, the school, the colegio that I filmed in one of my episodes. I did a walk around this block and I walked past on our way to our La Colonia. The La Colonia that we go for groceries is in Saragossa, whereas the Maxi Pali that we use also for groceries is in La Borio. This is Emmanuel Pizza, one of the pizza shops that, <laughs> that the girls really like. We've gotten pizza there a number of times. I'll show the sign. Sorry for all the swinging around. I wanted to walk farther out in the street. There's just enough traffic that it's pretty hard to do so. And then this is another, this is Papa Jam Pizza, which I, I don't think we've actually had. It's a beautiful spot. A lot of these places have really nice, beautiful buildings for, you know, a pizza shop. And this area, of course, very popular with students because this is all the Colegio that we're walking past. So my goal, and this is going to be kind of hard, is to walk the entire barrio, and I'm already a little bit warm. I think it's getting pretty humid because there's rain that's almost happened but hasn't actually happened yet. And so it's got that, it's not that hot, but it is really, really humid. So Saragossa is one of the major barrios. It is one that is close enough to El Centro that it has a lot of businesses, a lot of things that people know, a lot of restaurants, bars, uh, hostels, a few hotels, schools, um, a lot of the... <laughs> they're very hard to see. I don't know if you can see them, but they're, they're behind the fence waving. It's a little bit hard to see on here. Hola. And a city bus. I, I can't tell who's in there, but they know my name. So I keep hearing Scott, Scott. That's uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so more buildings along here. And we're getting pretty close to the end of Saragossa's southern edge. I'm gonna go to the southern corner and turn north as a starting point. Okay, we can get a little bit out in the street here. It is not a huge barrio. It only goes from Ruben Dario, which you can often consider street zero in the city. And then the first street on either side is first, uh, first Calle North or first Calle South. And Saragossa goes from Ruben Dario or zero and ends at third. So the only streets we have to go down east-west is 
we've already done Ruben Dario is first, second, and then third. First and second, both sides are Saragossa, third only the south side. What are these? All right, this is the southeastern corner of Saragossa and our third pizza place. This is Hollywood Pizza, which I've never had. They're quite popular. You can see their delivery all over town. On the right here, I'm gonna point out, so this is not Saragossa over here, but this is the famous art museum here in town, which I did show a little bit one day. I'm gonna show, so this is El Centro right here. This is the Church of San Francisco, Iglesia San Francisco, and it's, and it's convent. This is Il Convento, which is now a really fancy hotel and restaurant and cocktail lounge and all that. And then this is still Hollywood pizza over here. So in just a second, I'm going to walk over to the convent. If this taxi will not block the road. Okay, I'm going to hop over in front of them and let you see just real quickly. So the convent here and the eastern edge of Saragossa here. All of these places are quite nice because they have views of the convent, which is gorgeous and well-maintained. It's a big business. A lot of shops grow up along here just because of the location. This street is very, very popular as far as traffic. So anything, any businesses along here get a lot of visibility. Anything happening at the convent? And here I'll give you a nice view. This is the, the driveway for the convent, but that's El Centro not Saragossa that we're looking at. I love this location right here. They've got one of the best spots in Saragossa. You can see another Variedades clothing in the window there. They need signs. You never know who's selling and when they're open. Mostly pretty well maintained along here. And this is a large Variedades here. Toto. And then here we are at first. This is first Calle North, so the first through road of Saragossa. So I'm standing in El Centro looking at Saragossa, just gonna wait for traffic and I'm gonna head down first so you can see this street in its entirety. It's gonna take a little bit. Get across here. Oh, actually, not so bad. All right. This is a, a pretty well-known leather shop on the corner here. Major, major location. Leon is known for its leather working and its tanneries. So there's a tannery. There was a time that I, I showed a tannery in town and I didn't know what it was. And I said, I don't know what this is. I think it might be like drying produce or something. It was a tannery. Um, and I actually go past it pretty often. Uh, and real quickly, I just want to... Quite a few really nice buildings around here. This yellow one. Right over here is Casa Vieja. <laughs> Casa Vieja is uh, one of the only Mexican restaurants in town. I'm unfortunately no vegetarian, so we never eat there. So I've never shown it, but it's a really nice looking place. Um, and then this house here, really, really nice. I'm going past the clinic. Uh, mostly these are residential. This is the heart of Saragossa, this and the street to the north. You can tell we have a fair number of shops, but mixed in with houses. So uh, Veridades or clothing shops, a carniceria, meat shops, another Veridades house. Little essentially pulperia on the left. I believe that is a professional makeup shop on the right. And then we're already at an area that you know we have the party solutions and events on the right which is obviously a very high-end store this is not the kind of thing you get in most barrios or very often um, and very ornate they're very cool i've never been in there but it's definitely they put in a lot of effort and then this is our la colonia and we are on the north side of 
Lasage. I'm not going to worry about showing anything off to the left or to the south because we have done this walk so many times on the show. If you're interested in that, you can find it somewhere else on my episodes. No issue there. And we've walked where we're going right now a bit as well. But since this is the core of Saragossa, I am going to try to include it on this walk. I started this walk with my watch saying I had 5,000 steps for the day. Uh, and by started the walk, I mean, when I started the video, I had to walk to Saragossa to start the video. So there was a little bit of extra walking in there. But uh, pretty much everything you're gonna see, we have seen at some point. On the left is the gymnasium for La Sage. And on the right, I mentioned this on another episode, is a really fancy uh, structure for like uh, barber and salon. Glam cuts, or glam cuts, maybe. Dentist on the left. So Saragossa is very safe, decently affluent. This is you can see sometimes I talk about the street signs. It says third going that way and first going this way. So we are crossing Third Avenue as we head down first. I'm watching the battery on my GoPro go down very quickly and it's acting like it's not charging. So I'm not sure what's up there. I was very diligent to make sure that not only did I have a charged battery, but I had the Volta grip ready to go. Um, but it doesn't seem to have any juice left. And uh, we may be having to cut it short just because there isn't enough battery to make it through all the streets. So I'm going to do my best. I have been walking a bit. It's not down that far, but it appears to have exhausted the grip very quickly. This is a really nice house right here. I love this little corner. Uh, let's see, I can back up. <laughs> it's definitely a very old house nestled in that they've done a great job of, I don't know if modernizing, but making really, really attractive. And we have a restaurant here on the corner. I actually don't know what this restaurant is. And we're back. That is the Iglesia that I pointed out again, so you know which street we are at as we continue down first. Coming up on the left, you have the Dragon Bar. I've gone past this so many times on my walks, I've still never been in for a drink. Some cute places on the right. Other variedades on the right. This really cute little spot. And then this place that I've been wanting to go to and have not made it to yet. I did a video where I walked by and was like, what is this? And discovered this giant restaurant here on the right. And uh, we keep forgetting to come down and try it out this is the big buffet, which is very difficult. So I really don't want to come here with Dominica because the chances that there will be food that either that either of us can eat is very low because it's a buffet um, because they don't custom make the food. Another really nice house here. I've not seen anything yet that's advertising that it's available, which is surprising. That doesn't mean, of course, as we've talked about in other episodes, it doesn't mean that nothing is available. Simply, a lot of people don't bother to advertise even on their doors because they don't want to have it say that all the time. And since there's really nobody actively buying, there's very little point in advertising. Really nice big house that I'm going past here and a doggy sleeping on the sidewalk who's trying to ignore me. And this is, I've shown this before, this is the Corinto Bar Junior. 
which is just a small local bar. And then I talked about this in yesterday's episode. Here in Zaragoza, here is a lot that seems like a perfect opportunity where someone could purchase this and there's seemingly nothing there. And in theory, you could come in, take down whatever's there. There is, there's walls and stuff behind, but there's no like active structure. Hola! It's wonderful? Yeah. It's uh, Se Vende? Ah, si. Oh, yeah. Si? All right, they're saying I should come take video and get some look around. So we will see later what this is, but I have a feeling it is available and we know who to ask now. Where you from? I'll be back in just a minute. All right, I'm back. I'm here with Marshall. We've been talking. He does glass work uh, here and is right next to this lot that we were looking at and I got some video of that and uh, he has the contacts so if anybody's interested look at yesterday's video about the talk that we had and we can get information about that. So we're going to continue through Saragossa but mucho gusto, very nice okay. meeting you and uh, hopefully we see him on the vlog again. Okay. <laughs> right. See you later. Adio. All right, cute little place over here and we have an Eskimo ice cream shop again well, that was very fortuitous that we now have the information we need for ah and this is a libraria which is a bookstore which often bookstore here it's supposed to mean bookstore but often means school supplies which is obviously a lot of bookstores do school supplies even in the u.s but that is that is how that is used now i hope i am on the right street that I have a little bit farther to go. I'm gonna get run over by a bicycle. And I do like this. If you see this in town, the Piensen Grande Big Cola, this is where it is located. And I'm swinging around before continuing. Now there's something, I don't want to get run over here. You can't tell what it is, but look back here. I'm going to raise the camera as much as I can. There is some absolutely gorgeous structure back there that goes way up in the back and basically has a gazebo in the sky. I have no idea what that is, but that is something really interesting. And I have no idea if we're going to be able to get any closer to it than we are here. So that is the kind of thing I'm always talking about. There's some really cute houses over here. Again, nothing's for sale publicly at least um but that's what i'm talking about one of these houses right here appears to be the front end of whatever that beautiful tower is back there behind that is crazy i'm i'm so interested to know what that is i need to uh check that out on a satellite view and see if we can figure that out at all because that is something right there when we come by this open space i'm going to see if we have any view of it again I'll try to only spin you around if there is something to see. Buenas tardes. No, I can't. I can't see it from this side. It is possible that it is visible from the next street and we will take a look there. Once upon a time, this is a Claro and movie star store back when there was blackberries how funny is that clearly not in a long time movie star is now tigo and blackberry is obviously been gone for a really long time here's another example of places i talk about this is obviously a place that went through a fire and i have mentioned it previously this is a beautiful structure though imagine what you could do with this but who knows if it's available who has control of it how you would get it um and obviously a lot of work would have to go into that but and that's when you would not want to tear down. You would want to work with those bones and make something really classy that fits with the structure. But how cool could that be? Something really, really neat. Hola. And another Libraria on the right.
This place comes with a cat. Hello, cat. <laughs> this is a legal office. They often refer to this as a buffet, which I find very funny. And I do believe we are, yes. So this is 8th. So this is the edge of Laborio. So this is Sutiava that we're looking at right here. And we are going to head north. So on the right side, as we head up, Cosmo Libraria is the edge of Saragossa. And I'm going to head to the left side of the road to the Sutiava side so I can point the camera towards the Saragossa side so you can get a view of it as best as possible. It's really hard without a 360 cam to really get you guys a view of everything. And even then it would be like, oh, you gotta look this way, then you gotta look that way. Uh, there's no, it's no really easy answer. Luckily these roads are not that terribly busy, so works out okay. Done 2000 steps so far. And when I talk about the high sidewalks, these are perfect examples. Why are the sidewalks so this high? I have no idea. And then they go right down. So do they need to be that high? And then why do they not need to be high for this little bit? And then they're high again. So I have no idea. Little street hamburger place that probably opens up at night. Heaven only knows. There is a hot dog place very similar to that uh, next to where I live. Now I'm going to cross the street because we just found a place for sale. But it's not Saragossa. It is technically Sutiava. But it is so close that... Lo siento. We're going to show it. So this in very large structure, garage door, and that is Sevende. Now that is through an agency, but I don't know which one. So we're going to get a little bit close. We're going to get a little bit of info here. I don't know what CL stands for. Probably something obvious, but I, d I don't know. So but that's a great spot. And I really like this spot next to it as well. This is a really cute place that is not for sale. I like this one a lot more. So much character. But that is a nice structure. That is a nice house. And if you're looking for a spot around Saragossa, that place has potential. Definitely one of the larger, fancier houses. All right, we're coming up on second. So like I said, there's only two east-west main roads through Saragossa, first and second. We've done first, we've done zero. Now we are doing second. And a lot of this you have seen in other Saragossa Barrio walks, but never have I done one so complete. And I recognize people on the street up here. All right, the, this is a slightly less busy street than first. First is really the main road through Saragossa, but both uh, are pretty big. All right, this place on the right is quite nice. But again, not available. And I'm going to walk back a little bit because there's a view in here. Hola! All right, you can see in front of us, we are walking back towards the church. So the Iglesia Saragossa sits on second. That gives you a good landmark. And if you're able to see in the video, which I really bet you can't, we have a very visible volcano at the end of the street. So this is the street that has the best volcano view. Now on the left here, this row of houses is set back a bit. So it gives a completely different feel and makes it feel much more wide open and the street wider, even though the street is actually the same. Both sides set back a little bit. So this street has a very different feel than most of Saragossa, which sits much closer to the road. It makes it feel much more modern, but of course the houses are necessarily smaller then. And some of these actually opt for raised front patio areas, which is pretty cool. Now, hopefully I don't get run over. Really trying not to. We've got some really cute houses along here. <laughs> And like I said, it's very hard to get both sides of the street as I walk. So sorry, I have to swing you all around. Oh, you're good. <laughs> and then we're going to have to come back because this is a, a little jog that doesn't have any through road 
so I have to kind of do some extra work uh, to show that to you. Got pharmacies, dental clinics, pulperias on both sides. This place is cute with the green on the outside, orange on the inside. Buenas tardes. This is a bakery on the left, Bambino. Never actually seen it open. I'm going to swing around a little bit because I think we have a little bit we want to show on both sides of this. I love the colors. When they do the like turquoise and orange, that's about my favorite of the colors. And you get one about every two or three blocks, someone does that color scheme and they're just, it stands out, I love it. Uh, and then we've got a print shop, some houses. You can see the bakery. You can see we've got street signs on this street and just waiting for the traffic. This is the Uka bus coming through town. I've never seen them up here before. That's the Leon Managua Uka. So that is actually, while I'm filming this, Alan and Anna are on that bus, but I don't think they're on the one that should arrive already. Uh, but that bus is what they will be coming in. I don't know why it's in this part of town though. This is an acupuncture place and some cute houses along here. So that is the mini Uka bus that we ride when we go to Managua. So actually, so I'm filming this tomorrow, right? This is the Thursday episode, but I'm filming on Friday, as is often the case. Friday is my biggest day for filming because I tend to have the least work on Fridays. So I'm the most able to escape the office, get out and just get footage for you guys. So I'm often doing two or three episodes on a Friday. So I would say on average, it's the day that gets the most actual recording. So as I'm recording this, uh, Alan and Anna are on one of the Uka buses coming out of Managua, coming to Leon. So they're on that exact bus we saw. Um, and uh, it could actually be that one, given the amount of time I've been out walking. Um, and then Marcella and Asel are both coming out on the Uka bus, but have not gotten on it yet. This is a really cute spot. I can't see what's in there. They have a gorgeous courtyard and gorgeous windows looking into it. This one to me actually feels like something out of Antigua, Guatemala. Uh, the whole way that they have it set up. I think there's like a school in there is what it actually is, but I don't, I don't really know. But so the Uka bus coming out of Managua has all kinds of people heading out here. And our plan is we are all going out to Il Capriccio for Italian dinner tonight. And then the whole crew is talking about going out dancing somewhere on the east side of town later on. This is the Centro de Pai, which is not pie like you eat, it is feet. But they do use the word pie uh, for pie as well, but they pronounce it pie instead of pie. <laughs> but a bit confusing at times because the Centro de Pie and the Centro de Pai are exactly the same word and you don't know if you're getting feet or pastries. Okay, I'm gonna hop across the street here because you can see the church there, so you know where we are. And this, not available, not for sale, but is a really gorgeous house. I've shown it before, I know, but I've never like stood across the street and really filmed it. And it's just, I'm gonna put the camera up a little bit and see if you guys can get a view. I love the design with the little windows in the middle and the, the balconies that come out and the ironwork and the plants. And it's what a great spot to just sit and look out. And I think this is a school on this side. Um, and uh, it's a cool spot. It really is. And then I right, come up, I'll we'll verify it's a school. Yes, it's the, Cole the Colegio, the Catholic school for the, the church here, the Iglesia, which I've filmed many times. The church built in 1886. 
And some barrios are named after their church. Some churches are named after their barrio. In this particular case, the case this is the Iglesia Saragossa. The barrio Saragossa is named after it. La Borio is the opposite. It was the, I believe this is correct, it was the barrio of the workers, hence La Borio. And it was one of the oldest barrios, or the oldest barrio, but it was not El Centro. This is, by the way, a, it's like a dessert store. They do chocolate stuff? I don't really know. And uh, uh, we're walking along the church here. Uh, so La Borio, the actual name of the church is something else. De Laborio. It's just the church of whatever saint in Laborio. Uh, but I'm pretty pretty confident that the name Laborio refers to the barrio where the workers, where the laborers would reside in the early days when El Centro was downtown and where the the colonial magistrates and owners and such would would reside. Because this was at times one of the colonial capitals. So a lot of, a lot of big stuff happened downtown. Cute house on the left. Farmacia Irela on the right. And then we have a paint center here. And down the road you can see La Salle, that is the, the colegio down there. And I have not respotted that tower that we were looking for. I'm not exactly sure where it was, now I'm now I'm slightly lost, so I'm kind of just moving my head around to try to find it. I don't think it was at the church. I think it's this block, but it's not visible. Hola! This is, this is a church, the Iglesia Oasis de Esperanza, which is the Church of the Oasis of Hope. Still, as we come through, really nothing for sale. Another Veridades is not open at the moment. Sometimes they are by appointment only. That is not uncommon. And wait for this traffic. Just a tiny glimpse into a house here. People looking at us. Try not to be too intrusive. This is another high school here on the right. Saragossa. Oh. In esta casa nació el ilustre ex presidente de la República, Dr. Jose Madrid, honra y gloria de Foro Centro Americo. This is, so Jose, Jose Madrid is, I had no idea this was his birth home. I, that, wow. Um, so he was president of Nicaragua and uh, one of the uh, departamentos or the states of Nicaragua way up north is the state of Madrid that is named after him, not the other way around. Uh, and so very early president, as far as I know, but that's interesting that we found his birth home. It is kind of obvious that Leon and Granada would be home to many ex-presidents. So looking at this street, that means we are just above La Colonia. So in case you're trying to find where we are on the map, we are back to there and we are crossing and continuing on. More street signs. It's this area right here. Obviously, there's a lot of opportunity in this corner for some improvement if there is something you're interested in doing. But right past this, another gorgeous house. I love these iron works with like front, front courtyards. They're so gorgeous. But you really do give up so much of the interior space of your house to do this style. I'm torn whether I would want to do it because going flush with the sidewalk gives you so much bigger of a structure, but there's such beautiful front, front patios uh, that so many people have. When you walk by, you're just like, wow, I love this place. And often the, the overall houses are often so large that they're impractically large. So there's a reason why people opt to do different types of things. Here's another one. There's a garage that comes up, but they have a little open front area. It lets them, they look really nice. And you can easily have like little gardens out front. This is a dentistry office here. And you can have, uh, you know, potentially seating. This one just has old washer and dryer, not, not ideal, uh, but it's very popular. You can have seats out and a little garden um, and have a beautiful spot 
uh, to enjoy and it really encourages like neighbors to stop by if you want to sit out on the street and a lot of people at night here sit out on the street so okay so this is i don't know what this is but we can get a view of it and then that's like parking and see as we back up if we can figure out what we're looking at so this is a high school here uh but i'm not sure if we can bring up the camera okay so this is a high school sorry my camera went a little bit wonky on me and this i don't know if it's associated it kind of seems like it is because of the roof line but because of the colors it's not a hundred percent certain but i think it's the parking for the baptist high school that is on this block and then that is first baptist church right there on that corner so that makes a lot of sense if that's what that is now you can see the iglesia saragosa down the street i'm going to go back across the street and stand at the high school and get a view of what's on where i was just standing and this is we have some nice houses all along here and then this place on the corner is fantastic i have a car an suv in the way but it's a little bit hard for me to, to film it for you they have some great balconies wonderful windows it's a very adades in the front talk about a beautiful home though and giant absolutely huge and that's a very big clothing store in there Hola otra vez. <laughs> what a great spot. And the balustrade up there is fantastic. Yes, I know words like balustrade. Okay. I did not get run over. I'm an expert. He was pretty sure he was going to hit me. And uh, another really nice house along here. The church is completely full, so I'm going to be quiet for a second. That church is full, full, and very fancily dressed. There's something going on. All right, so this place is Hostel Nika, which I think there's more than one with that name. And in front of us is Poco a Poco. This is one of the most popular hostels in the country, not just in Leon. Very well done. Uh, famous for their high quality of everything. We'll just look in for a second. We've known many people to come here into town and stay at Poco a Poco, uh, including Cami when she was here uh, after hanging out with us for Christmas. Uh, this is where she stayed. Uh, if you see the video where she popped in and hung out with us uh, for New Year's Eve, that is where she was staying at and walked from to come join us downtown. Very easy walk to get downtown. From here, it's about a street. Some really cute places here next to Poco a Poco. Lots of potential for beautiful homes. And then here, we talked about big open space. Obviously, there is opportunity there. I don't know if it's for sale. Always the question is, is it for sale? But look at all the stuff along here. A motivated buyer could probably convince someone that there is interest or reason to want to sell it. Now I'm going to come across the street and get some of the people on their motorcycles. Really nice spot over here that we see. Every so often I walk by this and comment. It's a, it's a different style. That wall at the top, you can see the barrier. So that is a front wall and then open behind it. Uh, so they probably have a big front garden and then a house behind. Head forward again. Zumba classes. So now this place is Scars Leon, Scars Leon to Region, and there's no particular information about it, but it seems like mostly at this point a decrepit building, um, but who knows? Someone would have to really research that, but sometimes the best places are the ones worth researching. I know so many people who just spent a whole bunch of time get lawyers get people on the ground and do a bunch of time researching places um, and, and get places that just no one has put the effort into and the people who own them didn't know that anyone would want to buy them uh, and so sometimes that is how you get uh, the good deals it's just if money isn't the thing that makes it happen sometimes it's effort 
And sometimes it's just wanting a place that is obscure and no one else has really taken seriously. There isn't too much of that, uh, but it does happen. This should be, to the best of my knowledge, we are now at the next corner of Saragossa. So this is El Centro over here with, this is a uh, Asada that uh, Paul likes. And we are about to head north. Now, some of these places do say, say Vende, but these are from an agency. So these are meant to be sold to expats and are being listed at many times the normal price, most likely. So you want to be very, we don't really consider them to be for sale. Often if you contact um, and ask for information, they'll be not available. This is a children's store. Lots of stores along this part. I'm gonna cross the street and go to El Centro and film from there so you can actually see Saragossa. Some of you will notice Spacio, a popular shop, and this is La Avenida, the amazingly hip bar that we showed uh, about two weeks ago on the show. Fantastic, one of the, probably the most modern um, of the upscale eatery and lounges in the city. Absolutely amazing, I love it. <clears throat> I'm walking past Lazy Bones on the El Centro side. And then this is Mediterraneo Restaurante here, uh, which we have been to a number of times. They're, they're really large. Uh, they go from the edge of the purple to the other edge of the purple and they have multiple fronts. And then there's a very dotty in between and then La Avenida. A very large restaurant. So the next ro uh, road we're coming up on is third. And uh, that will be, this is a longer block than the others. We have one of the universities here. This is one of the small ones, Universidad de Occidente, or the University of the West, Western University really. Um, and this is uh, the West being Leon and Chinandega are the western cities. So this is the university of this region. And here in El Centro, this is Napoli or Napoles. And it looks like an interesting place, but I've never really figured out anything about it. Like what their menu is or when they're open or exactly what's going on. So, um, so that university in an old building. And then we've got a couple cute houses here. And on the uh, on my right side that you can't see, I'm at La Mexicana, La Mexicana, and Imabite. Just in case you're looking at a map and want to know where exactly we are, this Norte de Sur. This is the energy company. So if you're going to pay your electric bill, this is where you would come. And we are standing on the corner of Desayunazo. This is the breakfast, or it, we call it a breakfast restaurant because its name is the breakfast. Um, but I will grab a quick, since we're standing here, this is looking down at El Centro. This is the Super Express where Alan discovered good ice cream. We are now heading west along Saragossa. And uh, Desayunaso is best described, other than its name, the breakfast tree, as a diner, a Nicaraguan flavored semi-american diner it has a very diner menu and vibe and uh just overall feeling leones so i'm walking in the barrio north of saragossa and looking south on the northern edge of saragossa This is a lot of walking that we have done today. Let's check our battery. 61%, we're doing all right. I am extremely sweaty, for those who are wondering. It's just humid, it's not that hot, but I am just sweating like crazy. And we have been walking for almost half an hour at this point. Luckily there's no sun or we'd be in tough shape. The camera would have overheated by now. 
Here on the left, another one of those opportunity spots. Looks like there's very little there. But it's hard to tell. You just never know what you're going to find. This section of the barrios, I think, really feels like you're still very much downtown. If you're just walking through this, you'll actually have a hard time being like, wait, I wasn't in El Centro when I did that? And it's like, nope, it's actually out in the barrios. But the city has, has clearly, over the years, sprawled west more than other directions, and it feels like a continuous extension of downtown, even out here on the northern edge of Saragossa, than you get uh, in other barrios. If you go south from the city, Guadalupe feels a bit more disconnected. La Barrio definitely feels more disconnected. To the east, there's the big arteries kind of cut those barrios off from the rest of the city. This is a Cyber, which in English would be Cyber. It is a Cyber Cafe. Somewhat popular. Hola! <laughs> I'm going past another university on the right, but staying focused on Saragossa. We can walk all these other, these other side some other time. <laughs> <laughs> I can only show so much on any one walk. I do wish I had my new business cards. There's so many people we could have handed them out to today. Now this place on the corner, to me, has a industrial America turn of the century, meaning late 1800s, early 1900s vibe to it. So if you're looking at a really old, small American city, like in New York or Pennsylvania, something like that in the 1890s to 1915s, this feels like the kind of building you would have. You can see neon lights and someone putting a bar in there and, and serving beers on a, on a Thursday afternoon for the guys getting out of the factory in a place that looks like that. Lots of decent looking places along here. And you can tell, so one of the things, is, this one's interesting, notice that the lines here are not straight. So it's really hard to tell which houses are large and which ones are small. And I can see in the back, so I'm, gonna, I'm hoping if I stop here and get out of the road and don't get run over, yeah, they're waiting for me. Uh, if you look at the building behind, there's some really interesting structure up there with multiple layers. And in the back, they have an open metal mesh before it goes back to another roof. There's some really interesting stuff back there, probably to get airflow in the house. And all of these would be so cool if you could just go through every house and be like, what have people done? What are the styles that they've done and, and everything? Because it's just, it's very interesting. Um, Veridades, a veterinario. Okay, way down the street, you can see La Sage. So we are. <clears throat> We are just past La Colonia, past the school. There are a surprising number of houses that have a second story and only have it back behind the house. So there's just so much that goes on in the middle of the blocks that you can't see from the road that houses are one story at the road really tells you very little. And they are also varied. Some are two stories, some are one story, some are just a wall, some are up front, some have a patio. Like there's so many different structures that every one is just a mystery until you get in there. Now this one is the Hostel Saragossa, which I've shown previously and looks from the outside like a really nice spot. Mm -hmm.
All right, so this place on the corner here is for rent, say Aquila, para negocio, which means it is rent f to be a business. Obviously, if you want to make it a house, no one's going to stop you, but their intention is to rent it as a business. It is a great business location, and it's a nice looking structure. I don't know anyone who needs a business on a corner here in Saragossa. There is the church. So it is a pretty good location. This is very central at the corner of 2nd Avenue and 3rd Calle. We are walking down 3rd Calle at the north end of Saragossa. Now this structure over here, this looks like something really solid, but it looks like no one's doing anything with it. My guess is that it is an apartment building, but heaven only knows. So we're heading forward again. So this place, El Cofre, which is a nice house over there, but that is a uh, furniture store. It is a muebles. And so the reason that I know it's a furniture store other than the name is if we turn around is they have both sides of the street. They actually do furniture here. That one has the label. I'm heading back over again. We are getting closer and closer to rush hour time. So there's a bit of traffic. Again, here's a little spot. What could it be? Who's using this little space between things? It's probably part of that greenhouse, but heaven only knows. Okay, we have a house for sale coming up, finally. This is not a bad little stretch here. So I believe that the place is for sale is this one with the garage and the spot to its to its side so i think that it is all of it if i can get my camera to come up i think it's all of this is my guess but it's hard to say for sure uh but there is the number is taken down i have enough traffic that i can't go across yet and this is a this is important for alan the little restaurant that you can maybe hear music coming from behind me is actually a halateria which is an ice cream shop it is a Dos Pinos ice cream shop here in town. Now, yeah, two of the numbers have been removed. So supposedly this house is for sale, 87942, and a bunch of numbers that are gone. But this is a Dos Pinos Helados right there. Cute little spot with little tiny tables. That's the good ice cream from Costa Rica. Come out, sit, and enjoy as you walk through discovering the north edge of Saragossa. I'm going to head back over there. House with a unique style that I've not seen anywhere else there. <coughs> oh, that is a Frijoles place. I need to remember where this is. A Frijoles place next to a Dos Pinos ice cream place. That's perfect. All right, we have this dog in the road up here. I'm pretty sure I saw this dog earlier, somewhere way else different in the city. <laughs> okay, and I believe I am correct that this is the corner of Saragossa, but I just have to get across the street to see the sign. Oh, just enough traffic going just so slowly. I almost got clipped by a stool. Oh my gosh, this is busy. One more, one more motorcycle. Here we go, here we go. No, this is 7th. 7th Avenue coming up. Okay. We have one more street to go. Oop. Okay, we got another one for sale over here. This is okay. This is a cute house. Lots of potential. Good, good part of the street. And they're turning. All right. Now this is. 
For sale, but there's no information, but nice window, seems like good condition, nice fancy window work in the front. So at least we know where it is on the video, but someone will have to come down, knock on doors to try to find out. This is contact center advertisement for people to take jobs, probably in Managua, let me see. Does not seem to say. Hola. Very high sidewalks here. I'm going to actually double back here. I just came past, so we just came past 7th, and we have the small street here. You've seen this on the show. This is the little street that heads up to um, uh, uh, Martyrs and Heroes and Martyrs of Zaragoza. So Heroes and Martyrs of Zaragoza lies up there, which is another barrio with a very similar name. And it's an absolutely beautiful barrio. I love it, but it's very different than Zaragoza. But that is the tiny little alleyway that leads to it. You're kind of, it kind of is hidden, so nobody knows it's there. The number of expat, like one expat I've ever heard of is in there, and I don't even know if they're still there. All right, got a big, nice house over here. One of these along here is a friend of mine's house. I'm just not sure which one, because I came by taxi at night one time. It might actually be this one, but I'm not sure. This is a Chinese restaurant that I'm coming past, or so it is labeled, I've never seen it open, but it's on the right, it's not. This is, I have shown this before, the Juarez Club de Videojuegos. This is, yes, you actually come here and play video games. Uh, and some people were asking me about video game places. Obviously I've been past many, uh, they're all over the city, it's a common thing, but this is just one in a small barrio. Just to give an example of these are kind of everywhere. Um, and uh, they're moderately popular because it's a place to come hang out and it's very social. I'm just gonna show up. This is obviously not Saragossa here, but I have walked this street before and I really like this area north of Saragossa. You get some really neat areas. So this here that we're looking at in front of us is the northeast corner of Saragossa. That is Sutiyava with the pile of rocks and all the trees in front of us. And this is 8th Avenue they were coming up on. And we're gonna let cars go by. And here we go. Oop. I almost walked into the car. Again, I'm gonna head to the far side of the street so that we can point at Saragossa and you can actually see it. Uh, I do not remember what this is. I think it's a factory. It is a very large structure. I do not believe it's in use. Obviously this you could buy. I guarantee if you could find the owner of this, it would be available. I don't think it'll be $5,000. Very, very large large spot even though it's in rough condition could do something really interesting with that space and something like that think about how much good that would do for the city if that was turned into something valuable instead of a giant lost space and and part of the problem with these lost spaces one is that they're ugly so they don't encourage people to loiter in a good way and they create dark spaces in the city um, and that's not something you want. You want active businesses that are well lit uh, at night that create traffic and interest and keep their streets safe and big dark areas uh, create um, the opposite. Places where things can happen and where people don't feel com comfortable. Uh, and uh, so whenever possible, you want to avoid those. So when finding, quite often I, I find that there will be spots where there's a dark, dangerous spot of a street and the only thing that's missing is a single business or a single home that really likes to have lights. And that's all it would take. And you can take a dark, dangerous area, an area that makes everything around it kind of uncomfortable because of that one spot. 
put in a business and it could be anything. It could be a clothing store, a cafe, a coffee shop, or, you know, you name it. As long as it keeps its lights on at night, even if it's not open, it can make all the difference to being a, a major safety difference in the city, or at least a perceived safety difference. It may be perfectly safe in the dark, but it doesn't mean that people are comfortable uh, with those places, comfortable going into those areas and, and, and visiting uh, because uh, of that. So we're actually doing a part of 8th that we've done previously. But in just a minute at this intersection, we're going to have a new part. And I'm not going to do all the north-south roads, I don't think, because it'll, well, yes, let's give it a try. I'm going to get to the bottom of 8th, and then I'm going to try to do, I'm going to stop the camera, because this is a really, really long barrio walk, right? I am just rambling as I show you everything, but I'm hoping you guys are enjoying this. I mean, it's, it's kind of cool. We're just out for a walk together. It is a really nice day, unfortunately too humid, but it's, it's quite nice. It is currently 3.42. So I've been walking for, I think, a bit more than an hour. The camera's at 45 minutes and I had to walk to a bit to get it started. Uh, so yeah, this is, a, this is a serious walk today. We've done 5,000 steps so far. And we're just getting started. I'm realizing that I'm going out dancing this evening and doing a very, very, very long day of walking is probably foolish. Before going out dancing, remember that my right foot is still broken. It's fairly healed, but I have good days and bad days. And uh, today is pretty good so far, but kind of asking for problems, I think. But sometimes the days that I work at the hardest are the best days, so I don't really know. Ah, this is a animal health center here that I was not aware of. They have glass windows in the back. That's kind of fancy. This, I've pointed this out before. I really want to check out this restaurant, the restaurant Shikai, which is traditional, like pre-Columbian food in theory. Really want to come up here. I've got a couple of these places that's so hard. I got to find someone who is adventurous and able to eat lots of different things that wants to come check them out because Dominica cannot do that. As one of my food challenges, for those who don't know, my wife is heavily allergic not he okay that's the wrong term she is allergic not heavily to onions and peppers um, and a few other things that bother her but those are extremely bad and there's no way that she can eat them she do does not go into uh, anaphylactic shock it is not going to kill her but it is really bad so uh, we have to be really careful with restaurants um, that because everybody uses onions and peppers or chitoma here in Nicaragua is just and I mean, most places, right? Most of the world uses those flavors for everything. Uh, that's that's common, so it's not you. Woo! I just stepped off a little lip there. Didn't see it. And uh, I bravely crossed the road. No, we're good. Uh, and so because of that, it's very hard to go to a new restaurant because the chances that they will have food that is not made with those things, and that is Laborio over there. We are back on Ruben Dario and uh, and our vegetarian the combination is so impossible that that finding new restaurants is really really hard okay so we're looking down Ruben Dario I'm going to stop the video and bring you guys back up when we get to the next street that we have not been on yet we are standing at Ruben Dario and this is 7th Avenue we are heading north this is one. I'm not sure I've shown you guys this street before other than just looking down it as we walk past it. The avenues tend to be more residential. The calles tend to be more uh, commercial, but remember most commercial buildings people live above or behind so it's not like there isn't residential in most of the cases. It's just Whether it also has a business What is that? This? Ooh, this is a cute house right here. Oh, yeah, a lot of modern touches to it 
I can't easily get to the other side to show it to you. Well, maybe I can, maybe I can. Here we go. We're crossing the street. We're doing it. Okay, the Pienza Grande mural is over there. And here we go. We've got a couple places here. This is a less modern one. And then there is the more modern one that I was just saying, I think. No, it must be this one. Anyway, there's a couple interesting places right there. And then as we come up, we have the Big Cola Pienza Grande. And I don't know where the chibi shop is. Oh, an anime shop. Oh my gosh, I have to show Liesl. Okay, my daughter, both of my daughters are very much into anime, but Liesl will be really interested to come up here. So I'm getting a little video, but I can, now I know where it is though, in, on 7th. That's the kind of thing, those are the things that I love about Nicaragua. In the United States, you would never be on a side street in a neighborhood and discover an anime shop. And so often in Nicaragua, it's like, no, there's no way someone's going to have a shop for whatever thing. No one's going to have a video game arcade uh, in the middle of a barrio. No one's going to have, by the way, this house as I go by is enormous and just open. Wow. That is really cool. I don't know if you're able to see that on the video. It was neat. Let me tell you, that place, just a wall with some, that's probably someone's backyard. Lots of really good fruit trees in there. That is a papaya tree loaded with papaya right there. Buenas tardes. A lot of good houses along here. Saragossa really is a great place to live. It is so close to El Centro and has so many good things of its own and cute neighborhoods, but also opportunities. You can see along here, if you were able to get houses, there's a lot of places that would likely be move-in ready, but also likely come with a lot of fixer-upper possibilities, modernization, uh, changes to the style, things where you can really make a difference. Hola, buenas tardes. All right, so this is a house for rent. I'll get close enough to make sure we get the number. Just 87142338. And I'm gonna back up as soon as this horse goes by. So this is one. Hola! <laughs> the guys on the motorcycle were saying hello but I kind of turned away by accident. So that's a cute spot, and this is a great neighborhood. And uh, some of my favorite types of trees right here, they just make such a gorgeous accent in almost any neighborhood. And this should be Second Calle, Segunda Calle Noreste. All right, we have one more block to go north and we will be at the north end. We are back at the Panaderia Bambina. Ooh, doo -doo 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 -doo. I tell you, doing this video while talking and trying not to get run over while doing this during rush hour has its challenges. I'm not going to lie. We got a long wall here on the left. Who knows what it is? And some cute spots on the right. A little pulperia there. Some cute houses here. Buenas tardes. All right, I promised we would do this other street. And here we are. This is the street that hides behind the other streets. So we will do the jog and then come back to the top of it to finish seventh. When we are done, we have a little cat here. I have done this street before, but it has been probably six months. There are some neat houses. It is a very quiet street. You get very little traffic because there's no through road. Come on, what is that are these? And some cute spots over here as well. I'm not exactly sure why there's a mid-block 
street like this here, but it's very interesting. And this one I've shown before has a little walkway through to the back. And uh, hola, buenas tardes. Very nice house here on the corner, which I've shown before that has these beautiful trees in its front patio. And then at this point, so this is the corner, okay? So that is second that we're looking at right there. And that is seventh that we're looking at right there. Nice little corner. I'll show you the historic marker here. Colonia Cuatro de Mayo. So this is this little bit here is a historic colonia in the midst of Barrio Zaragoza. And every country and city uses these terms a little bit differently. But so apparently here, and I've seen this a number of places, a colonia is a sub partition of a barrio. And this street doesn't go anywhere. This is it. It is a dead end street. It's one of the very few in the city like this. Um, I've been down here before, so that makes it really, really quiet. There's no way to have through traffic. I have no idea what this building is at the end. I'm sure we could look it up on a map. I'm not gonna go all the way down, but you can see what it's like. There's actually really nice houses here on the left because, and, and continuing, right? Because it's so quiet here. It's, it's a pretty desirable spot because you're in the middle of the city, but you might as well be in a private little community. Hola. <laughs> Even up here, if people know who I am, he just said one dollar, which is, which is my nickname. Back in La Borio, which is not that far away. There's that same dog we saw earlier. I try not to have to go. I don't have to. I only have to go about halfway down this for you to see everything. The buildings at the front are on second. You've already seen them. There is a nice looking house here on the right, and one on the left as well. And we're going to turn around and head back to seventh. Oh, I like that color and that garden. Very nice. Very, very nice. I am looking forward to that Italian dinner tonight. I have not had breakfast or lunch yet. And I have already done 11,000 steps. It is four o'clock and uh, planning on eating at 6.30, so two and a half hours to go. Hopefully everyone makes it in well from Managua and uh, be able to go get that nice pasta dinner. I may need something more substantial than that before I get there, or a salad and pasta, we will see. I hope everyone is enjoying the walk. Please remember to like and subscribe as we do this because this is just, just take a moment, go up, hit that like button, makes a difference, like for real. It really helps the channel. Uh, and uh, this is a long one, I know, and it's very rambling, but I do try to give you guys some variety on the show. Like I do want it to be like, oh yeah, we never know what we're gonna get on any given day. There's gonna be like a big topic or it's Scott's life and something's happening. Uh, there's just, we get to see a whole bunch of the city. Today's a see a whole bunch of the city kind of day. Uh, and it's, it's essentially impossible to keep up a constant thought process while doing this because I'm, I'm dodging traffic and I don't know what I'm gonna find because I'm exploring every street uh, and it makes it just very difficult to be continuously interesting. Uh, just being intelligible is a bit of a challenge. Really great murals here. We're at the top of 7th, where it comes on to 3rd. This is not Saragossa that we're looking at, so we're going to stop and take you down to 6th. We're going to pick up at the top of 6th. All right, we are back at the top of 6th. Heading down to the Iglesia. This is obviously a very popular street here. This is the main north-south road in the middle of Saragossa. So, very desirable. We're currently just coming off third, so we're at the north end. Got some really nice spots over here. A couple of these houses with matching fronts and little patios. That's gorgeous. Love that style. Here's a place with potential. Clearly was being built and never finished. 
No one has worked on that, I would say, in quite some time, but it is hard to say. This is another video game shop, Nintendo Ilea, with PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4. And it's a cute spot. Okay, we have a really great location here. This blue house is Serenta, which is the same as Se Aquila, but with an, it's Spanglish technically. So this is 58326355. The location is really hard to beat. I'm gonna go to the other side of the street, make sure we get a really good shot of this so you can see where we are and why it's so cool. The house itself is nothing to write home about, but that is the Iglesia Saragossa. We have the house on the corner, one, two, and then the blue one is for rent. Definitely a small place, um, but on sixth, just off of the corner was second. Talk about being in the middle of things. It would be really, really nice from that perspective. You can see the sixth Avenida Norwesta sign there. And as we head across, I'm gonna walk diagonally over to the church. We have an army of students on the way down the street. I think they're coming from the Baptist school that I showed earlier down there. This beautiful church here. We're gonna turn and you can see where we were. This is a pretty cool corner in general. Then we have the school over there. Hola. Now this is another example. See that little spot there? Is that, is that something that would be available? I don't know. But a great spot that something could be improved dramatically and help out the community. This is a Centro de Rehabilitación. It's like for breathing. This is Primera Calle. First street here. I hope my audio is picking up on all this because I have been talking for more than an hour. It would be terrible if none of it was there. All right, we have just a little bit left to go. We're gonna be back at Ruben Dario here in just a minute. And then I'm gonna cut off the video and we're going to teleport over to the south end of Fifth and do the same north-south again, or south-north as the case may be in that particular case. This is a nice stretch of the street for sure. Every single house is really, really nice. Lots of different styles. Buenas tardes. Hope these are all visible to some degree. Many of these I have shown previously because it is one of my favorite stretches. I'm just gonna go over to the other side and make sure you get the full sweep of the east side as well. I did not notice any of these for rent or for sale. As always, that doesn't mean that they aren't available. You just have to know who to ask and be willing to offer what people want. You can totally see this place that I'm looking at with the kind of gold. That could easily turn into a 1960s US Midwest restaurant and you would never know you weren't in the US. You could see an old cigarette machine in the corner, a jukebox, it's, it could be on Laverne and Shirley, I swear. <laughs> Sometimes the overlap of architecture and design with 
completely displaced elements is is so interesting. Uh, that used to be a ferretaria. I don't think it still is. And this is Ruben Dario. So we'll see you over on Fifth. All right, we are on the south side of Fifth. We are at the Colegio La Sage. We're heading north. So the Colegio is on the right. Very little traffic on this street. A really large house right there. Okay, that block was really boring. So we came off Ruben Dario, we're coming up on first now. So this has a name. Sometimes then it's so Avenido 5 Oniente. I'm not sure what that means. It also has a Zona number. This was originally Zona Uno. We do not use Zonas here in Leon. I don't know when they did. Working our way from first to second. Hola, como esta? <laughs> so this is a pupusa restaurant. Oh, gotta check this out sometime. This is exactly what a good pupusa restaurant should look like. Pupusas mi pollo. So that's pupusas, which is the El Salvador national food. My chicken. Pupusas my chicken. That sounds like a place that would be really good as long as they have things that aren't chicken. All right, really cute front patio over here. Several really cute places over here. I want to be able to show the other side as well. So I'm crossing over so we can show it. Oh, I love this style. Really well maintained. That's some great front work. That place has Hebrew written over the door. I have no idea what it is. This is a really, really large house with multi-stories and a front walk area. And you can see the school right down there. But this place right here, wow. Really a lot of potential, a giant, giant place. This is a pharmacia and a law office. Interesting. And a travel agency here. This place rents a room for students. So student rooms are common here. If you've seen the video of my office at our house uh, area, that is a student apartment that I'm using as the office, which works really well. That's a good good way to go. The student uh, rooms are kind of, kind of like a studio apartment. They're a little bit smaller or a bit smaller than you might think of as a studio in the US, uh, but that's basically what they are. But they, the difference is a studio in the US would still have a kitchen. And here a student apartment does not have a kitchen, uh, at least not necessarily. And so it's even cheaper than you would need if you were going to cook. And the one that I have, the way that it worked is they had a little outdoor kitchen. So multiple student apartments would go outside and cook, share a little outdoor cooking area. It's very, very small. And of course you could put a little refrigerator in your apartment if you wanted, but most people would not. They would simply get food to cook and cook it and not store anything, or they would uh, go out and get food from restaurants, frittangas or whatever. Because the frittangas are so affordable, um, it actually makes it make a lot of sense to not cook at all. This is a couple of really cute houses right here. And um, yeah, so eating at a frittanga, if you're a student, would be between one and two dollars typically uh, for a good size meal in the evening and lots and lots of people do that so if you actually do the math on what it would take to go to a grocery store 
get the things that you need and to cook it at home, it easily would cost roughly the same. And so the value of going to a Fritanga is extremely good. Your variety is going to be very low. And so you may go get some fresh fruit or something at uh, a market. Um, but as far as cooking your own rice and beans and, and staple items, uh, it probably doesn't make sense because it's, it's so affordable and so good. Um, and it helps the economy to go on the street, find a Fritanga, and get basic food that way uh, you can really get quite a lot to eat very easily so this is third once again this big beautiful house up here on the corner but that is again not saragossa that we're looking at so we are going to stop the recording and teleport over to fourth and head south all right we're at the top of fourth we're at this really cool house again and i'm turning to head south this is a dental clinic on the right, so I don't need to show that really. And some cute houses on the left. My back is starting to hurt from walking all this way, carrying the camera. But we are almost done. We're getting towards the end. This is going to be one of our longest videos. I hope a lot of you are hanging out and watching the whole thing. It's great to have on in the background, look up occasionally. It's good for reference to be able to see the barrio. If you're someone who is investigating Zaragoza, this is take your time, watch the video. Get to know all the spots. All right, here is a great example of, I don't know if this is a real number or if there's being weird, because obviously this is not Abbey Road. Here are a couple of places that give me the impression that they may be available and no one is bothering to sell them and could be really great places to fix up. I'm going to cross the street because we have the Clinica Union here which is a really nice medical center i mean i haven't used it i don't know how it is from a medical care perspective compared to the other clinics in town but it is a nice building it's good for the neighborhood sorry for the bounce and then we have this really nice house over here beautiful color and styling garage in the middle i think this is actually two houses that are just stylistically similar they look really good together In front of us is La Colonia. So I film this so often, I'm not gonna go down and film the La Colonia section. So I'm gonna cross over just a little bit. So you can see, fifth goes down there. Beautiful houses here on the corner. We have a really nice salon here on this corner. Like this is fancy modern salon. I hope you can see what it's like in there. Now we got some nice houses here and some more normal things and then we have this mid block half road which i don't know excuse me i don't know if we've ever shown it on the video before uh so we're gonna head down and do this and because it's a half road very little traffic makes for a more quiet street tends to be a popular place to or a desirable place a desirable place to live this blue house is large and really nice beautiful balcony and then if we walk over and turn back this is a beautiful house someone put a lot of care into that design and even this pink one very cool a little bit not my style but pretty cool so this one that i just mentioned the familia garcia coronado house that is so large and so nice is for sale or rent so that is 2311-3894 or 8676-0339, the first one being Claro, the second one being Tigo. I'm gonna go across the street again, make sure we can get a shot of this place. This is not going to be a cheap place. This is a very desirable location, and that is just absolutely enormous, all the way down to that great balcony down there. And uh, you can probably see that there's windows up there. I don't know how much you can see. Okay. And this is a cute place over here. They're shooting pool. and a wedding lawyer. I don't know what that means. Okay. 
and we are over on 4th. Now, because of the way we've popped up, I'm not going to take you one way or the other. I'm going to teleport to the south end of 4th and walk back past this road. So in just a second, we're going to be at Ruben Dario and 4th. Okay, at the bottom of 4th, this is the convent. So we don't need to go all the way down because you've already seen everything from that side. We're going to turn and go north and head. So this is the leather shop that we also went the other way. It's on the corner so you can see it both directions. We are heading north on 4th. This is our final stretch of Saragossa. Bear with us. We are almost to the end, and I think there's going to be some interesting things to see along this stretch. And we're already one block up because of the way that the convent works, so we're in great shape for this to be a short little jaunt. I'm going to cross over, hopefully not get hit because this is tight here. You can see some very nice houses. Remember, the left is Saragossa, the right is El Centro. But before we go very far, I'm gonna pop in here. This is the Central Popular de Cultura, and they're doing a lot of work in here. Hola. Oh, look at this. A... Hola. That is like one of the museums in town, but not one that I've ever been to. I don't really know how to use it. I need to have someone do some research on that. Now, we have a say vende here. So this is, and sometimes they say for sale. And it's not necessarily because they're looking for English audience. That's because the signs just come that way sometimes. So don't read into it. And uh, this is a very small spot, but in a great part of town, you're right by the convent across from the cultural center. And I'm just gonna get a shot here, see if we can get any information, but that's a garage door, a cute little entrance, a nice little palm tree here. Very nice. And hopefully we can read this. Okay, this is definitely, that is a US phone number. I think you can read that. So in the US, it's 305-318-9777. And here in Nicaragua, it is 505-8378-3105. All right. That's awesome that we found one. There's so little for sale. That's nice. This is a beautiful house we just walked past. Multi-story, great garden. You would never guess, never guess. All right, so we've got First Baptist on the right. Remember, they were very busy as we went by before. Hola! It's really amazing how many people talk to you from moving cars when you're filming. They're like, oh, we're on TV, woo! <laughs> and here, since uh, it's the school on the left that we went by earlier, and you can see all the students in the chapel there. Looks like a school activity going on at First Baptist today. Boy, that's a lot of people. And we came by here earlier the other way. You can see this beautiful building that I was raving about here on the left. And oop, I'm gonna get clipped. Okay. So again, I'm gonna go to the El Centro side and show the other side. So this is Dolphin Accessories that were coming past. They have actually a number of the storefronts here. They do accessories, so you could say these are not random accessories, they are accessories with a porpoise. We have an optical shop. There is a cake decorating pastoria over here. This is El Centro, of course, but you know, <laughs> this is the neighborhood. Right now we're going past the Union Nacional de Agriculturas y Ganaderas. Basically, it's the Agricultural and Farmers Union. And there's a salsa school all in El Centro, but lots and lots of things going on in this neighborhood or in this general area on the street. But this is Saragossa that we're looking at. Buenas tardes. All right, lots of very nondescript houses along here. Not very much to discuss. There's a sign, I don't know what this one is. It's got promise. Uh, no, they're selling knock and tamales. We are nearly to the end of our absolutely complete Saragossa walk.
a nice little corner here. And this is third. This is the end. We have done it. We have walked every single inch of Saragossa today from corner to corner, corner to corner, through every street along the way. Really hope that you guys enjoyed this. I uh, hope it was useful. I know not a lot of places are available. That's sad in a way, but if there's things we need to research, let's research things. Let's figure out. And, and like that one place where we met Marshall, like somebody could, could really want to do something amazing with that. And that would be really awesome. Thanks for joining me so much. Like and subscribe. Comments below if you'd like to. Uh, buy me a coffee. You can do that. There's a link down below. And I will see all of you tomorrow.